All right, guys, so thank you for joining me. Um, today I have a video I'll be shooting in parts, and then my son, uh, being 15, knows how to edit all these things, and we'll hopefully put these together. So I have a Benchmade 535 bug out. This is my first full-size bug out. Um, I do have the 533 Mini. I uh, haven't done much with this. Got this through Blade Forms. It's got a pretty great fit and finish uh, and a custom Highland Green. Looks like scales there. Um, but I was not initially interested in the Benchmades. Um, I think my passion moved more towards the uh, uh, the ZTs and the frame locks and then maybe things like the Elementum, um, again with the uh, flipper tabs. Um, but what really got me thinking about the bug out was I obtained a, a Hogue Deca. Uh, this is the Deca in Magna Cut um, with blade scales aftermarket G10. And this very, very quickly became my favorite day-to-day -day carry. I do have some small office, elegant kind of office knives that maybe I enjoy carrying to work, but this is my workhorse and this thing just, I mean, it is unbelievable and just cuts and cuts and cuts. And of course, you know, a lot of people compare these to the bug out. And so it kind of piqued my interest maybe in the bug out. So anyway, that being said, uh, we have a plan. We're going to unbox this. Uh, then we're going to do a time lapse uh, disassembly. And then we will be doing some installation of a full variety uh, Flintium uh, Aftermark uh, Crossfade Scales in Black along with uh, tight flintium or flitanium, excuse me, flitanium, um, titanium blue axis bar lock, um, titanium thumb stud, and body screw. So it will be all black and blue, except for the blade, I would guess. I haven't decided about these. These are G10 barrel spacers in the blue. So we'll see how the current barrel spacers compare up color wise. And then I also have KVP um, oversized washers. So all that being said, let's start with the unboxing. So I'm very excited to, to kind of work with this. I guess I should show you a little bit here. So we have the 535 bug out blue class, whatever that happens to be, uh, and the CPM 530V manual open pretty sure all the bug outs are manual open so here we have our nice kind of foam insert the benchmade bag uh, pouch i guess i should say set that aside and uh, the care and use instructions or use and care manual i haven't opened this before but oh so we have our classes blue class uh, the heart of benchmade on the job or back country for those who appreciate the difference in high performance, care and use, cleaning, sharpening. Don't pry it or chisel, okay, or punch. Um, does have some exceptions to the warranty and the Benchmade Life Sharp program. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but maybe you can send it to them and they'll sharpen it. Next. So. Let's move this off the table for now. Let's take a look at what we got. Ooh, I like that color. That's a nice deep purple. We have something, the axis lock with some information here about how it's been installed. Just set that aside. All right, so I've heard a lot of talk about these guys on initial unboxing that their fit and finish is not that great. We're pretty well centered. Satin blade, blue gribery scales, black hardware, black axis lock, black deep carry pocket clip. Pretty tight, pretty strong little pocket clip. 
I don't know if this thumb stud and the matching back spacers are titanium or aluminum. I'll have to look at that in the specs. Let's see how this thing opens. A little bit crunchy. Nice satin finish. Grind looks pretty good, looks relatively even. Closes, so it opens and closes. All right, let's try it so that I can feel that just kind of grinding along. Hopefully a cleaning is gonna help with that. And there's some linear striations here up on the, the flats, drop point. Ooh, that is definitely not drop shutty. That's for sure. Well, pretty strong there at the end though, wow. Let's see. And boom. Mm. So definitely needs some breaking in, needs some TLC, but since we'll be disassembling anyway, we'll have lots of opportunity to clean it up and lube it up. Very well centered. Okay, so let's maybe, thinking of that closing, I guess it'd be worth showing what I'm discussing here is, you can see here kind of the free swing with pulling back on the axis lock and that kind of very easy shut. So let's try that. Uh, yeah, there it goes, nothing, okay. All right, so let's start with some specs here. This tool only goes up to six inches. Well, I guess with one extra there, so we can at least measure our blade. So it's like our blade is at three, 3.2 and a half, 3.25 maybe, 3.24. Let's try it on this side, see if we can see it better. 3. Point, yeah. I'm going to have to say 3.2, 3.23, pretty close. Uh, overall length, definitely longer than 7 inches. So unfortunately, I don't have a tool that goes further than that. Maybe on this mat, we set this here, looking 7.2. Seven point three, seven point four. Um, I guess we can compare it size-wise to a few other known. So there's to the the Hogue Deca, just about the same size. Here to the ZT zero four fifty, same size. Obviously, the one that most people would probably compare it up to. You can see that against the 533 mini bug out. Quite a bit shorter. And we can measure our blade thickness. Oh, let's close it. There we go, closed. Zero in inches. Tend to measure these guys right behind the thumb studs. We're looking at 90 thousandths. Pretty good. It's a nice thin flat grind. Very nice. Uh, I guess we could weigh it. Why not? It's supposed to be very light. So let's make sure we're zeroed out in ounces, 1.89, very nice. Okay, so there we have it. That's my initial unboxing, and just kind of general impressions. Love the color, do not like the action. But of course, as everyone says, it needs breaking in. So we're gonna pause, go from here to our uh, next phase, which is the disassembly. Thank you.
All right, so we're back. Um, we now have the Benchmade bug out disassembled. I have not taken the thumb stud off as of yet. Uh -huh. Looks like it's got a little torque screw for that. I'm gonna have to investigate that in just a minute. Just kind of cleaning up some of the parts here. Certain parts we're going to be replacing. So we're going to set those aside. All our body screws. Our pivot. Our washers. Well, I don't know if I have a backspacer or not. So, let us find out what we have. Oh, and the scales. <laughs> okay, so all of that has gone to the side. And we are going to open up, bring out these scales here. Ooh. Oh, man. Do this feel unbelievable wow that's gonna be nice okay and so we've got the scales there we're gonna do the washers for some reason I have two sets of the washers maybe I was thinking of doing it on the 533s as well Ooh, those are big It's interesting. Will those uh, I guess it'll work. So we'll find out if it doesn't. Um, and then we're gonna do the bar lock. It's a pretty blue, it's not as yeah, it's a much lighter blue than the back spacers. Hmm. Our body screws. It's like a nice, interesting, like pale, pale blue. And the thumb stud, which we're gonna have to figure out as well. Again, similar, similar kind of blue there. And what do we do with these? Hmm. So we don't have a backspacer, so we still need to get a backspacer. Have our screws, oversize, thumb stud, blue bar lock. So that looks like what we're going to be working with. All right. So I'll go ahead and pause this again. Well, okay, let's look at these. See what we think of these. It's like they're barrel. Mm -hmm. So let's see how these look. In well, that's pretty darn dark blue too, isn't it? Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? I'm going to stick with the originals for now and then work on getting some flytaniums that would ma maybe match. Mm, tough call. These are a little bit more pale. We'll see. We're going to leave that open for possibility as we get going here. All right. All right, so I got the thumbstead swapped. Uh, that was relatively painless. 
Uh, not nearly as bad as trying to get one off of a banter. And um, what I did realize is that I thought I had a replacement uh, blue titanium pivot, which I do not have yet. Still need to get that. Um, and still haven't made a decision here. I may install one of each and kind of see what it looks like as we put it together and then make a decision from there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to uh, clean up mode and we're going to clean this and lubricate everything and start putting it back together. All right, so we fit a snag. It looks like one of the fly titanium screws is just not quite taking the T6 pivot. And I've tried a four and a five or two small, and it just won't. I've been working on it for 20 or 30 minutes now, quite annoyingly, I must admit. And it just won't. I have blown it out. I have put lubricant in it. I have cleaned it out with the tip of these tweezers to I'm um, blue in the face. Can't seem to get anything out of it. I don't know. I keep wanting to try because I hate to give up, but I've already scuffed it up to all get out, I'm sure. So I believe that my only choice right now is to contact either Knife Center or Flytanium and see if one of them will replace the screw. And it's the body screw that goes into the axis lock liner. So I think short term, I'm just going to take one of the black screws from the original. Set this guy aside for right now so I don't misplace it. And because that's the only one, if it was that short pretty sure yeah that one's longer just a hair longer and so then they reveal on the inside of the okay so that's disappointing at best um, it looks like they have a lot of these screws are longer, I assume, because they need to be to extend through the scales. But this does seem to be gripping into that liner, I believe. Hard for me to say. It's in there. We'll see. All right, so that's a little bit of a setback that we now have on our hands. And a little bit disappointing on the fit and finish from the flytanium standpoint. I mean, I want to push really hard and see if I can get through there. I also don't want to lose it. So we're going to pause it, go back. So for right now, we're going to have one black screw in here, which is really, that's just sad. All right. Hold tight. Okay. So we're back. Um, as we talked about, we ran into one problem. I ended up, once I put in the original 
screw, I went ahead and moved it over to the non-show side, so at least it wouldn't be driving me nuts every time I open the knife looking at it. Um, and I think I'll start with just contacting flight, uh, Flightanium. I don't see any reason to bother Knife Center over it, although it's a fairly inexpensive product. So depending on the response from Flightanium, maybe I'll just give me a reason to order something else from Knife Center and I'll just order an extra set, which would be fine because then I would have spares. Um, now that being said, it's also giving me some thought about, I have an order with a German X um, for some, a, a anodized screw set for um, my ZT, which was really the first, um, you know, north of $150 knife that I purchased. Um, and still probably one of the better knives that I have. Um, sold to me in a local brick and mortar. Very good advice. What is that? Just some trash. Um, so anyway, I, I have a set of anodized green coming for this and I'm going to replace all this. So, you know, it may be worth looking into because I still need, I still need to get the pivot screw and I can't seem to find one through Flytanium. I really want to replace the pivot screw. Now the problem is, is when you have titanium anodized, it won't necessarily match. So if I get a pivot screw from Adrenaline X, it may not match this. So I may, and, and he does them all in a batch. So I may just have to get a full set through him. And that's a lot more expensive. So I'm going to talk to Flytanium first. One about getting me another set of screws. They won't get it. I'll just order another set. I mean, fifteen dollars or something. Uh, but it, when I contact them, I'm going to ask them if they do the pivot screw, and I just can't find it for some reason. Anyway, with some adjustment, you can see that we have a much more uh, droppy blade. It's got pretty good pivot. I mean, it still needs to break in. That's where I was spending a lot of time at the end of that video. That time lapse was adjusting it, so I wanted it to have a little bit of effort to it. Um, it's already loosening up though. Trying to get rid of the, the blade play, which is fairly common with, um, with any of your bar locks. And, you know, tuning it just right and then giving it time to break in. You can see just that tiniest adjustment and I lost all that droppiness. And so you want to get just the right tuning and I want it to have a little bit of effort so that as I break it in, I have something to work towards. Um, Closer. I mean, obviously, it closes fine. Just can I get it to that kind of drop with just a little shake? Don't have to just slam shut like the. There we go. And I also don't want it to bounce. That's what my Altus does quite a bit. The button lock bounces out. And then I was working with getting it centered, which I think we have it pretty darn centered. I mean, I don't know, I guess how much I'm expecting myself, but um, I like him to be centered. That's spot on. I'd like to get it to like that, where it's got a little bit of slowness in that drop. Just a hair, but I'm, I'm probably fiddling too much. This is the problem of not leaving things alone. So, 
Anyway, there we are. I'll probably come back once I get that screw done and finalize this video. Oh, I like that. There we go. That's it. Finalize that video. Nice. You know, it feels bigger than the DECA, and it's really not. I mean, I mean, body size actually looks a little smaller, but it feels fuller in the hand. I think because this takes up so much, you tend to get right there is your sweet spot. This one, that's not as deep, so you have a little more room, it feels like, here at the end. These scales are really interesting. I mean, they, they feel very good. They have some grip. But they have some contour to them. That's very... I'm not sure I have a set that feels like this. So, I... Oh. There we go. Definitely need some breaking in. Lots of <laughs> lubricating and just some rotating. I, you know, I have no idea if those larger bearings, you know, they, they shouldn't. I guess it's more surface area to contact. So the theory is, and it's wider, is that you can tighten it down further and eliminate that common blade play. I mean, there's no blade play in this at all. Um, and eliminate that blade play with tightening down further. Uh, I think a drop of lubricant here on the, maybe on the lock itself would be, well, I don't know. That's kind of running pretty darn smooth, I've got to say. So, you know, my goal was to make a, a true carrier, you know, one I can just use and not abuse, but use, you know, ridiculously and enjoy it. And so I think that's what I've got here. Um, I'm also recognizing I'm not sure I should have this pivot on the, the show side like that some thoughts. I don't know. I will work on that between now and when I see you guys again. That's it. Thank you. We'll follow up once it actually looks right.